Hi, my name is Ritu Raman, and I'm a former NSF Graduate Research Fellow. I've been sharing my tips and tricks for winning the NSF Fellowship with a lot of people over the years, and people have liked them, so I thought I would document them all in one place. So here it is. Here are my five tips for writing a winning NSF GRF proposal. Number one, there is a time for modesty. This is not that time. So back in my day, that's right kids, I'm old, you could apply for the GRF three times. So I applied as a senior and an undergrad at Cornell, and I got rejected, but with pretty good reviews. And then I applied as a first year grad student at Illinois with a more refined research proposal, and I was still rejected, not so great reviews this time. And so my second year of grad school, I knew this was my last chance, so I had to put everything I had into it. So I went to the external fellowships office at Illinois with my personal statement and my research statement, and I said, you know, what am I missing? Can you help me with this? The person I met with at the fellowships office, Ken, He's just super friendly, and I have a tendency to overshare with pretty much everyone I meet. So I'm like telling him my whole life story instead of focusing on this essay. I'm like, oh, you know, I grew up in India and Kenya and all over the United States. I've been to 10 schools and learned in five different languages. I've skipped grades, I've repeated grades, and I've done all of this stuff. And I told him that the reason that I'm an engineer is because my mom, my dad, and my grandfather are my inspiration. I always saw them using engineering as a force for social change in the world, and I wanted to be like them. And that's what you know brought me to engineering, and that's what was bringing me to grad school. So then Ken looks at me and says, you know, why didn't you write any of this in your essay? And I'm like, oh, you know, it felt very like fairy tale, immigrant dream. Like, look how hard I've worked. Look how far I've come. And I didn't want to brag basically about all of the things that I'd accomplished. And I think a lot of you can relate to that. You know, we're taught from a very young age by our family and our friends, you know, don't go walking around telling people what smarty pants you are. Um, so that's what we do when we write these essays. We don't walk around telling people what smarty pants we are. But what you have to realize is that you're not trying to be friends with the NSF. You're not trying to date the NSF. So you can brag all you want. That's what they want to see. They have like a few minutes to read your essay and learn everything about you. And you need to show them your best self. So tell them that. Tell them how hard you've worked. Tell them what you've produced. Don't be modest. Brag. And nobody's going to judge you for doing that. I mean, you'll probably judge yourself a little bit, but it's okay. Just like go home, eat some ice cream. You'll be fine. Okay, now time for tip number two. Pretend all of your life choices make perfect sense. If you are at the stage in your life where you're eligible to write a GRF proposal, I promise you, you've done a lot of things. You've been in class, you've done a lot of research, maybe you've worked for a startup, maybe you're a YouTube sensation. I don't know your life. It is your job to tell me about your life and convince me that it's a story that I want to hear. For example, I did a lot of random different internships and research experiences when I was at Cornell. And I could tell you a story that's like, oh, well, first I kind of walked around a park and showed kids birds, and then I put some rats on treadmills, and then I drilled holes in carburetor caps. Uh, but that's not really a story that makes a lot of sense or tells you anything about me. But what I could tell you is why I did the things I did and what I learned from them. So I could tell you that teaching children about ornithology taught me about how to get people excited about science and communicate it in an exciting way. And how putting rats on treadmills taught me about the adaptive nature of skeletal muscle and a lot of different biological materials and inspired all of my future research. Or I could tell you how drilling holes in carburetor caps was actually part of me trying to make water treatment facilities with local materials in the Honduras, and how that taught me to think about the societal impact and sustainability of my research. All of this sounds great, but it's not just about sounding great. It's about honestly connecting with the NSF, telling them who you are, what you care about, and why you do what you do. This leads us to tip number three. Write about your life like you're writing about science. Every experience that you write about in your essays needs to have a defined output, whether it's research or industry or outreach or even a personal experience. So think about the way that you write a lab report or a research paper. You know, you say, oh, well, I wanted to test the differences between X and Y, and I found out that X is 20% better than Y. This is also how your personal essay should read, but hopefully it's a little more exciting. So don't just say, you know, I worked on this summer project this one time. Say, I worked on this summer project, here was the larger thing, here is what I specifically produced, and, you know, they're still using this protocol, or I wrote a poster, or I presented this somewhere, or here's just what I learned. Maybe you learned that you liked it, maybe you learned that you hated it, but every experience has a defined output. You should be doing this for every single experience you write about in your essay. 
the last sentence of every experience should be what you learned, what you produced, what you disseminated. Intellectual merit, broader impacts. That's what NSF cares about. All right, so time for tip number four. Be authentic. Yeah, okay, I realize that's a sort of vague life advice that you get from blogs that like seems really great at the time, but is actually incredibly unhelpful. So let me break it down for you. Humans are really good at telling when other humans are being fake. So you can invest a lot of time and energy in trying to be the best liar in the world, or you could just tell the truth. So don't write your research proposal on something that you don't care about. You know, maybe a topic is really like buzzy and cool and it seems like everyone's doing it. So you're like, yeah, I'll write about that thing. But if you don't care about it, then the NSF is going to very quickly be able to tell that you don't care about it and they're not going to fund you. So you might as well write about something that you really care about. And if you're genuinely excited about it, I promise you that you can get other people excited about it. Okay, so caveat, that doesn't mean that you should be writing an essay about like optimizing the chocolate chip to cookie dough ratio in ice cream. Actually, you should write about that and you should put it online somewhere and like send me the link, but don't send that to NSF. You should write about an idea that you honestly, authentically believe will provide value to society, advance fundamental science, and is also really cool. And I know that sounds like a crazy big challenge and like, yeah, or two, like I'll just save the world right here. Um, but it's actually a learned skill, and if you practice it, you will get better. I will leave you with tip number five. If you win the fellowship, yay! If you don't win the fellowship, yay! I'm not just saying that. I applied for this fellowship three times, and when I got it the third time, I was so excited and I was happy. But to be completely honest, if I had gotten it, I would still have been pretty happy. Seriously, if you put time and energy and honest effort into writing about a proposal and an idea that you care about, you will find a way to work on it, whether NSF gives you money or not. You are going to be a great researcher whether you win this fellowship or not. There have been many great scientists who have been NSF fellows, and there are many great scientists that have not been NSF fellows. Don't get me wrong, the NSF is a great resource and an incredible accomplishment, and you should absolutely put your best efforts into trying to win it. But at the end of the day, there are only so many spots and, you know, it's kind of luck of the draw. So if you don't win a fellowship, don't beat yourself up. There is great value in doing what you're doing, which is writing an essay about why you care about these things, why you're doing these things, and how you're going to use science, engineering, or innovation to drive social change. And that is a really important thing that you should be focused on. So that's it. Those are my five tips for writing an effective NSF GRF proposal. One, don't be modest. Two, pretend all of your life choices make perfect sense. Three, write about your life like you're writing about science. Four, be authentic. And five, don't focus on the short-term goal of winning the NSF. Focus on your long-term goals of how you're going to change the world. Okay, so I hope that was helpful to you and good luck.